great to be in God's house. Thank you, Jimmy. God bless you for blessing us with that song. Amen. <clears throat> well, you can turn in your Bibles if you'd like to uh, 1 John chapter 2. Uh, we'll be reading verses 18 through 29 this morning. Uh, we entitled our message, Walking in Truth. Now, uh, if you would like to, you may want to flip over to the book of Thessalonians uh, and also Revelation. We'll be reading uh, from Thessalonians and from Revelation as well. And if you want to follow along there, you may want to just kind of put your thumb over there. Uh, our text will be 1 John 2, 18 through 29, Walking in Truth. So... <clears throat> If um, we believe something is true, just because we believe that it is true, does that make it true? Just yeah. because we believe it's true? No, it doesn't, it doesn't make it true. Uh, I love the quote that Vice President Pence made at the debate with uh, Kamala Harris the other night. Uh, at, the, at the debate, he said to Kamala Harris, he said, you're entitled to your own opinion but you're not entitled to your own facts. I like that. And what, what is uh, true is true, and what is not true is not true. Uh, just because we believe something is true, even if we uh, sincerely believe that it's true, uh, doesn't make it true. I mean, if, if you believe that if you got down here on uh, FM 60 and you turned to the right on FM 60 and you, you believed, since just uh, uh, sincerely believed, that you were headed to Lyons, if you turn uh, to the right, you'd be sincerely wrong. Uh, you're headed to College Station. Uh, if you want to go to Lyons, you go out and turn left. Uh, so even if you sincerely believe it, uh, that it's true, doesn't make it true. What is true, whether you believe it or not, what is true is God's Word. Yes. Hallelujah. That is truth. God's word is absolute truth. That means that whatever you are going through doesn't change God's word. Wherever you are at doesn't change God's word. God's word is still true no matter what's going on in your life. Circumstances don't change God's word. God's word changes circumstances in our life. Faith in a lie it's not going to make it true, and it's not going to make a difference in your life. But faith in God's Word is true, and it will make a difference in your life. So John encouraged us here in 1 John. We've already talked about how he encouraged us to walk in the light and not in darkness. Uh, he's encouraged us to walk in love and not hate. And now he's encouraging us to walk in truth and not a lie. And in verse 18, John emphasizes two terms, the last days and the Antichrist. Let's read 1 John 2 and 18. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for what it means to us. Uh, God, we thank you for what it does uh, to us and in us and through us. And God, we ask your anointing upon the preaching of your word, the hearing of your word, and the walking out of the same. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said amen. 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 So these two terms that John brings up is the last time and the Antichrist. First, we'll look at the last time, or you might say the last days. The last days began in John's time and has been growing intensely ever since. The last days started since the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He began a new thing. A new covenant, if you will. The last day will come. The last day will come when the trumpet sounds and we rise to meet him in the air. Paul says it this way in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, 
with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. There is no prophecy left to be fulfilled except the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing left on God's calendar except the return of Jesus Christ. Right. We have been and are now living in the last days. We are right now living in the last of the last days. Yes. Yes. To further show us that we are living in the last of the last days, John tells us about the Antichrist. Antichrist means against Christ or instead of Christ. Antichrist teaches and describes two things. A person that will head up the final rebellion against Christ, and the second is the spirit in the world that opposes Christ. The actual Antichrist that will come, and the spirit of the Antichrist that is at work even now. John tells us that in 1 John 2 and 18. Let's just recap. He says, as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. He's talking about the person that will head up the final rebellion against Christ. And even now, he goes on, are there many Antichrists? He's talking about the spirit of the Antichrist that is at work in our world even right now. First, let's talk about the Antichrist that will come. Those of us who are born again, those of us who have our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life will be in heaven with the Lord when the Antichrist comes Amen. and when the Antichrist is revealed. In Revelation chapters 1, 2, and 3, John's visions are all about the church, the church of Thyatira, the church of Philadelphia, the church of Sardis, on and on, all about the churches. Then John says in Revelation 4 and 1, after this, after this, he says, I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking to me which said, come up here, hallelujah, and I will show you the things which must be hereafter. That is the trumpet call of God. That is the rapture of the church. The church will be taken up to heaven and we'll be worshiping the Lord uh, uh, and we'll be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, we'll be having a wonderful time uh, with the Lord down here upon this earth will be the tribulation yeah. and the Antichrist will be revealed. We see the Antichrist being revealed in Revelation 6, 1 and 2. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. The Antichrist will come, appearing to bring peace, but he is not bringing peace. The Antichrist will set himself up to be God. Paul says it this way in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering unto him. He's talking about the rapture. He says that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that day of Christ is at hand. In other words, what he's saying to the Thessalonians is uh, there was talk of, uh, of, of that, that towards the church there in Thessalonica that the Lord had already come. So he's letting them know, no, the Lord has not already come. <laughs> that day is at hand, but it hasn't happened yet. He says in verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means. 
Let no man deceive us by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. He's talking about the Antichrist here. Not going to come until the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be revealed shortly after the rapture of the church. And then he goes on in verse 4. He said, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God and that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. That is the abomination that causes desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel. But we're not looking for the Antichrist. Right. We're looking for Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. We're looking for Jesus Christ. So now that is the Antichrist which is to come. Now let's look at the spirit of the Antichrist that is in the world today and has been in our world since Genesis chapter 3. <laughs> Let's recap 1 John 2 and 18. He says, even now are there many Antichrist. So there are two forces at work here. The spirit of the Antichrist, evil at work through the influence of Satan, and the spirit of truth the power of the Holy Spirit working through the church. That's us. That's us. That spirit of truth, that church, is what's holding back and stopping the Antichrist from taking over completely. Yes. We are winning. Amen. We're on the winning team. We're on the winning side. Yes. God is in charge. He's still on the throne. Hallelujah. Paul says it this way in 2 Thessalonians 2, 5 through 8. He says, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his right time. What he's saying is you know what is, what is holding the Antichrist back until he can be revealed at the right time. That's what he's saying here. Verse 7, he says, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. So he's saying exactly what John said that we just read in 2 John. He's saying that the Antichrist is already at work. Then Paul goes on to say in verse 7, only he now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. What he's saying here is, is the church is holding the Antichrist back. The, the spirit of truth is in charge. God is in charge. And, and we, the church, are holding back the, the evil spirit, the spirit of the Antichrist. We are holding him back so that he cannot be revealed. He cannot rise up in power until the church be gone and raptured and is in heaven with the Lord forever. Amen. That's what he's saying here. Amen. Then he said in verse 8, And then... And then, he says, shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume by the, spirit, by the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Hallelujah. He's talking about the second coming there. You understand, the rapture, Jesus doesn't come to earth. It's not the second coming. The rapture is we meet him in the air we go to be with the Lord for seven years while the tribulation is going on here on earth. Then the second coming, we come back with Jesus and rule and reign in Jerusalem for, well, a thousand years. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> we know that we are living in the last of the last days. Yes, we are. The Antichrist is at work. John tells us there in 1 John 2 and 18, let's just recap one more time, the very last thing he said, even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time, the last days. The fact 
that the Antichrist is working so hard against all that is called God, trying to shut down churches, trying to shut and, and, and prevent our religious liberties yes. in America today, trying to shut down our freedom of speech today. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. <laughs> the fact that the spirit of the Antichrist is working so hard against the truth, it will not win. But it's working so hard, lets us know, John is saying, that we are in the last days. John gives us three truths about the Antichrist so that we'll know the truth. Number one, he says the Antichrist departs from the fellowship. He departs from the fellowship. We see that in 1 John 2.19. They went out. He's talking about the Antichrist. He's talking about the false teachers. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not at all of us. Yes. When we're saved, we become a member of the family of God. And following that, we become a member of the church. <laughs> and thank you for being a member here at Snook Assembly of God a Church. One of the fruits of a believer is that they love to come to church. I, I, I love to come to church. How many of you love Amen. to come? To, let's give our church a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. We love our church. Hallelujah. One of the fruits of a believer is wanting to come to church, wanting to fellowship with believers. And, and I want to thank all of those that are, that are connecting with us online, with Facebook Live, and connecting with us on YouTube. Uh, thank you for being with us today. And I know you want to be here, and that's why you're watching, is you want to be uh, 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 what God is doing right here at Snook Assembly of God. And you are. You are with us. If you look at the false teachings of today and even the false teachings of yesterday and on and on, you'll see that most started, started in a local church, and then they left the church, they left the fellowship of the believers, and what they have left is that they have left the true word of God. That is what they have left. Paul says it this way in Romans 10 and 3, since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God, they sought to establish their own. They did not submit to God's righteousness. They sought to establish their own. The very first command is to make no other gods. And that's what yeah. they are doing when they leave the truth of the word of God. They are making their own God. A God that they want. Instead of the one true God. So number one, they depart from the fellowship. They depart from the truth. Number two... They deny that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. They deny that Jesus is the anointed son of the living God. We see that in 1 John 2, 20 and 21. He starts out here by saying, But ye know, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. So he starts off here encouraging us today that we have an unction from the Holy One. And, and he's starting off telling us that we know the truth, and that truth has set us free. In John 8, 31, Jesus said to those that believe in him, he said, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. We know the truth, and the truth has made us free, and we are clinging hard fast to the truth. 
False teachers in John's day and false teachers in our day use two terms to describe their experience. They, they use the term unction and they use the term knowledge. They claim to have a special unction from God that gave them a special knowledge that nobody else has but them. That's the false teacher's narrative. Yes. But John says that we, as Christians, we have received the Holy Ghost. We have received the Holy Spirit into our life, and, and, and he dwells within us, and he uh, reveals to us the truth. And the truth that he reveals to us will always, always, always line up with God's word. It will. It and be will. true to God's word. In John, 1 John 2 and 22, John asks a question. Who is a liar? Then he answers the question. <laughs> but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. The main question for any of us today, any believer today, is who is Jesus to you? In Matthew 16, Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? They answered, well, some say John the Baptist, and, and they answered, some say Elijah, and and they said that some say Jeremiah or, or one of the other prophets. And, and then Jesus asked them in Matthew 16, 15, he said, but who do you say that I am? That's the question that he asked each and every one of us today is who do you say that I am? That's a question that we must answer. Peter answers in Matthew 16 and 16, he says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Peter, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also to thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. Amen. A true confession of who Jesus is involves a personal witness, a personal testimony of what God has done in your life and what God is doing through your life. 1 John 2 and 23, John tells us, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. He that acknowledged the Son hath the Father also. If you say that you worship the one true God, but you leave Jesus out, you are an antichrist. <laughs> we don't leave Jesus out. It's all about Jesus. Let's look at some examples of so-called believers that the word of God reveals the truth of the matter of them being antichrist because they deny who Christ is. The Jehovah's Witness consider themselves to be Christians. Actually, the Jehovah's Witness consider themselves to be the only true Christians. The key persons in the Jehovah's Witness is Charles Taz Russell, and Joseph Rutherford. They believe God is one person called Jehovah. They do not believe in the Trinity. Jesus is not God. Before he lived on earth, he was the archangel Michael. And after dying on the stake, not a cross, he resurrected as a spirit. His body was destroyed, and Jesus is not coming again. Denying Jesus. What's yeah. the word of God tells us? If you deny Jesus is the Christ, you are an antichrist. The Mormons. Key person is Joseph Smith. Again, one of those that had an unction. 
drop any I remember that nobody else had that doesn't line up with God's word. God the Father was once a man, but he progressed into Godhood. And, and if you do the things that they say you do, which a lot of it is secretive, but we won't go there, you could progress into God. Wow. He was a physical body, as is his wife, the Heavenly Mother. They do not believe in the Trinity. Jesus is a separate God. He was created as a spirit child by the Father and Mother in Heaven and is the elder brother of all men and spirit beings. His death upon the cross does not provide full atonement for our sins. It does not provide full forgiveness for our sins. You have to go through some hula hoops <laughs> and wear some different kind of clothes. But anyway, we won't go there. Let's just take a quick peek at Islam, Muslims. The key person is Muhammad. He is the final of many prophets sent by their God, Allah. Their God is Allah. Jesus is not the Son of God. He is one of the most revered and respected of over 124,000 prophets sent by Allah. Anyway, these and others are false teachers. They deny the deity of Jesus. Yes. Do not be deceived by them. You have heard the gospel. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 4, he says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you received, and wherein you now stand. He's speaking to us today. He said, you, you've heard the gospel that has been preached. You received it, and you stand in it. And he goes on in verse 2, which also you have been saved by it. He said, keep in memory that what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all, which is the most important, that I received that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Yes. That is the gospel of Jesus That's Christ. It. That's it. Amen. 1 John 2 and 24 John tells us, let that, what is the that in the let that? <laughs> let that that we just read from the Apostle Paul in Corinthians, the gospel of Jesus Christ, let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall remain in the Son and in the Father. The word that you have heard from the beginning is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul calls it in Romans 1 and 16. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. That is what we have heard from the beginning. That is what we need, and that is what we hold on to. Nothing else is needed but Jesus and the cross and him crucified, risen again. This walk began with a step of faith in Jesus Christ and will end in eternity in that same faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Paul told the Galatians in Galatians 1, 6 and 8 because they were uh, moving towards another gospel, another gospel that was a gospel that you were saved by works. And he told the Galatians, he said, I'm astonished that you would so quickly uh, deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all, he says. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we have preached to you at the beginning, let them be eternally condemned. John goes on to tell us in 1 John 2 and 25, and this is the promise 
that he hath promised, even eternal life. Eternal life. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Someone comes along with something new. <laughs> Hold on to what you heard that's right. at the Hold beginning yeah, yeah. that saved you and has kept you all these years. Yes. Someone comes up with something that doesn't line up with God's word, stay away from that. That's right. And number three, the Antichrist tries to deceive the faithful. He tries to deceive the faithful. John tells us in verse 26, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you or try to deceive you. You see, the Antichrist, they don't go out to try to reach the lost. They're trying to pervert the gospel and trying to turn us away from the gospel of Jesus Christ onto the gospel that is no gospel at all. The devil's purpose is to lead Christians astray. He's, I don't think, too concerned with those that are living in darkness and living a lie. He wants to get those that are walking in truth. Yes, he does. And that are professing Christianity and, and the goodness and the kindness of God and preaching the gospel. Those are the ones that Satan wants to destroy. I know when I was living out in the world, uh, it didn't seem like I was under very much attack from the enemy at all. <laughs> I was kind of destroying my own self. I didn't need <laughs> But when I turned to the Lord, oh my goodness, the, the, did the enemy attack. Yeah, he does. So I just want to remind you, if you make a decision to serve God, and you just believe, oh, it's going to be a walk in the park, picnic, <laughs> rose garden walk. God never promised us a picnic, rose garden walk. He promised us that he would walk through us through the valley of the shadow of death. And he would be with us and he would work things out for our good. Because when I became, when I changed my life from living for the world and for Dennis, to living for God, wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> there was some attacks. So people would say, oh, well, you know, living this Christian life is, is easy. I don't think they were telling, painting the, the exact picture. <laughs> <laughs> I understand what they're saying, all right? Because without God, uh, living in the world, you don't have any hope. You have no hope at all. I believe that's what they were talking about when they say it's easy because it is a lot easier holding on to Jesus than not having anything to hold on yes. to at all. So I understand what they were saying. It just needed to explain it a little bit. <laughs> The devil's purpose is to lead us astray. And he uses others to deceive us. So Paul says it this way in 1 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. And their end will be, they will be thrown into the lake of fire along with the devil and his cohorts. He tries to deceive us, but he can't because John tells us 
why he can't in 1 John 2 and 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abides in you. Yes. That's the anointing and the unction of the Holy Ghost. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth and is no lie. And even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. We know the difference between the truth and the lie because we have the Holy Ghost living inside of us, teaching us, and not only does he teach us, but he helps us to remember what he has taught us. Jesus tells it this way in John 14 and 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. We are led by the spirit of truth. Yeah. And we are led into truth. And we are led by his peace. False teachers are led by the spirit of error. John tells us in 1 John 4, 4 and 6, Ye are of God, little children. You have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. But you, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. We know because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Yes, yes. You ever been watching one of these uh, programs on TV and maybe a, a, a TV evangelist or a preacher will say something and, and you'll go kind of, oh, I don't know. <laughs> that, that's the Holy Ghost telling you that's, that's a lie. That doesn't line up with God's Word. That's right. Isn't that a beautiful thing that yeah, yeah. God gives us in our yeah. heart? It's leading us in the spirit of truth and keeping us from the spirit of error. Let's be careful that we take the whole Bible and not take Scripture out of context. That's right. That's right. If we ignore any part of the Word of God, we're in trouble. Just like I was telling you when I was led to walk us through the book of 1 John and I came up to the scripture at the beginning of the week and I was like, I don't know, God. I think I'll just skip over that and just move right on to 1 John 3. That's a lot easier to preach. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Lord said, no, there's nothing in my word that you need to skip over. So that's why the Lord reminded me that this is the, this is the right time yes. for this word. Oh, today is. I mean, we're talking about we're talking about the last of the last days. We're we're talking about us uh, going being raptured, the church being being taken to heaven, and then after after we're taken to heaven, the, the antichrist will be revealed. But we're not looking for the antichrist. We're looking for Jesus Christ. And yes. then after we're yes. going up into heaven. Uh, down here will be the tribulation and then uh, the devil and the Democrat, I mean the devil and de the demons will have their way and they can just take it away, you know Amen. and uh, that, that will be theirs we'll be in heaven with the Lord hallelujah hallelujah I almost misspoke there 1 John 2 and 28 he tells us and now little children abide in him hallelujah that whenever he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him in his coming. Amen. Oh, God, we're looking Amen. for Jesus Christ. We're listening for the trumpet call of God. And we're ready to go and be with you forever and ever at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And right now, we're just abiding in him, abiding in his word every day. And when he appears, we're going to be ready. And then John 
sums it up so beautifully in 1 John 2 and 29. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doth righteousness is born of him. Amen. We have been born again. Our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Our reservation is made <laughs> at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. We'll just be able to eat all the bluebell we want. <laughs> Not even get an upset stomach. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But aren't you glad that we have the spirit of truth yes. abiding in us so that we're able to walk in this beautiful truth. That we can walk in truth and we know the truth. And, and, and let's remember, we're on the winning team. Yes, we are. We're on the winning team. Yes, he's fighting. Yes, he's coming against us. But God is still in charge. Yes. He's not up in heaven wringing his hands and saying, well, I didn't see this coming. <laughs> he's got this under control. We just remain faithful. We just keep shining our light, showing his love, trusting in him, knowing that he's going to work things out for our good. Amen. Let's bow our hands. Thank you, Jesus. God, we're so grateful that we know today that you are for us, not against us. Thank you, God, that we know that even though there's troubles in this world today, you're still in control. You're still in charge. You got this. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you for that blessed assurance that we sang of today. Blessed assurance. And Lord, we know that we know that we know that we are ready when you call us home. And we thank you for that today. If you're here today,